Hello, this is Wampire, uh, here to talk about creating your own style, okay? Um, I think a lot of people today might be very, very quick to, to do so. And, uh, you know, um, I, back in the day, I definitely had that mindset. And uh, so I want to give some advice so that people don't just uh, immediately start making styles left and right, but instead they, they put in time and effort and then examine their stuff over and over many times over the years and go, do I really have something unique enough? Do I really have something to where I can call this a new style? You know, rather than I want to make a new style and, and start from that. You know what I mean? So um, at least for me, um, I started martial arts in the early 90s. That's when I officially started training and I learned Filipino martial arts at the time and uh, since then I've cross-trained. I've never stopped training in martial arts but since then I've, I've kept going and uh, around 2004 I was living up in Dallas and uh, Dallas can be a pretty rough city. I was doing security and uh, also um, living in really really bad uh, bad apartments, bad areas at the time. So there I got to experience some very nasty street things. And uh, also that was right around the time when, when uh, a lot of people from Louisiana for the hurricane were brought into Texas. So I was living alongside those people that um, some of those people were, uh, you know, kind of the... Uh, uh, how would I say the uh, the nastier, more dangerous kind of people <laughs> coming in? Uh, so there were drug dealers, there were prostitutes, and and I lived right next to them, and and I had to encounter, and I did encounter them, and and uh, so there were some interesting situations that I had to deal with. But so at that point, uh, I realized that uh, my empty hand skills were not enough. And that's when I made the choice that I wanted to personally uh, learn knife self-defense and, and to use a knife for self-defense purposes. So I looked up the world's best knife instructors and, and knife combat styles at the time. And uh, I really wasn't happy with what I saw. So I felt like I needed to make my own style. So it, it wasn't something I wanted to do. Before that, there were many times where I was like, yeah, I got something unique. I got my own style. But the way I'm saying that and the way that I was thinking is actually the same way as like if you look at Muhammad Ali, Mike Tyson, or Mayweather, all three of them are boxers. What's their style? Boxing. But all three of them do it very, very different. That's pretty much what I was doing. It was kind of the same thing. Was I had learned multiple martial arts, but really, even though I thought like, yeah, I got my own style, just combining arts together, combining styles together was, was not enough to say, you know, I have my own style. And then also fighting my own way just like the way Mike Tyson fights or the way Muhammad Ali fights or George Foreman fights, that also to me, now that I'm looking back on it, was not enough to say it's a new style. So, but at the time I was thinking that and I abandoned that, the, that thought. But once again, in 2004, around this time, what, after what I experienced, I was like, I need to make my own style. And there were basically uh, three major reasons why. Number one was 90% of what I saw, whether it was an organization, the instructor, um, they were prejudiced towards other styles. Okay, so they had that attitude of what we do is the best, other styles are not. So it's, it was prejudice. And, you know, that's like me joining a political party and they're like, yes, we're going to talk to the government and we're going to 
get funds and we're going to better our educational system. We're going to make more libraries. We're going to put money into that and, and uh, you know, improving the state's education. But we don't like black people. There's no way I'm going to join this political organization. If they're prejudiced and closed-minded like that, I, I don't care what it is they do, okay? I'm, I'm not going to be a part of that. So it's the same idea there to me. If you're prejudiced towards a certain style, all those people that practice that style, you're saying, yep, you're doing the wrong thing. You guys are all dumb. It's like that. And it, it, it's just like... There's no way that I, I'm going to wear the organization and, and be part of that and, and uh, you know, represent that. The, I'm not going to represent that way of thinking. So if you're close-minded like that and, and whatever, to me, that's an X. So now there's a lot of people that cross-train. So you could cross-train in Tai Chi, Praying Mantis Kung Fu, Wing Chun, um, and you know, Sing Yi and, and uh, some other Chinese style, right? You could still be super prejudiced. You could still be like, well, if it's not a Chinese style, I don't like it. Or, you know, that's a Japanese style. No, they they just borrowed from us. Or, you know, oh, that's sport. Sport is not real life. Or, you, you know what I mean? That's, so it doesn't matter that you cross train, you could still be very, very, very close minded. So that's when I developed what I call three dimensional cross training. And uh, this is something that uh, when people say, oh yeah, I cross train, they, I notice that even though people may say they cross train, it's not exactly the same. Like on the other hand, you could have uh, an MMA fighter and they say, yeah, I cross train in Muay Thai, kickboxing, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, boxing and wrestling. Okay, and they hate traditional martial arts, and they think tactical martial arts is complete phony baloney. Well, that's completely prejudiced too. So, you know, even though they cross train, so that's why with three dimensional cross training, I got, I looked at martial arts as a whole, and for combat purposes, divided into there's three main categories: traditional, tactical, and sport. So, three dimensional cross training is a specific type of cross training where you train in at least one of each of those. Therefore, you are open-minded in that sense to all three of those categories, okay? And you have now three different perspectives. This is different from a convert. A convert is someone like, let's say they did a traditional Taekwondo. They fought a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu guy, got taken to the ground and choked out, so now they stop that, and then they do Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu now. That's a convert. Even though they may have a ton of Taekwondo experience, to me, that's still a convert, okay? When I cross training is someone that does both to this day. So that is very important to me. So traditional, tactical, and sport, I do all three to this day, okay? With the intention of using and benefiting from all three to this day and in future days. So it's not like I'm favoring one over the other. No, and I didn't... I didn't abandon it and go to the next. No, it's it's not like that. I'm still doing all three because they're all equal to me. And and that is three-dimensional cross-training. So that's one idea. And that was one of the reasons why I couldn't go join to, you know, go learn the, the knife combat stuff. Because if I didn't see an instructor, they don't have to do that, but if they don't have that mentality, it's like, forget it. I don't want to be part of it, you know? So that was very important. Three-dimensional cross-training. So that's something that I had to create uh, because, once again, there's plenty of people using the term and doing cross-training, but they're still very close-minded. So to combat that, I created I created that. Okay, so that's that's number one. Number two was um, my personal preference was the knife. So I wanted to specialize in the knife. So I took my Filipino martial arts curriculum. This is, you know, pretty much the um, Kia stands for Kali Eskrima Arnis. It's the same thing. So just combine it. Just call it Kia. And FMA is Filipino martial arts. And as you can see. That is the curriculum. Everything here except for competition, I've done for years and years and years um, since. Um, 
yeah, so competition was just something I, I wasn't big into. Um, and and uh, I, I do have competition experience, but not in Filipino martial arts, and, and it's very limited. I, I did do a tiny bit. But uh, anyway, anyway, so so that curriculum I, I took as my main. That's, that's my Filipino martial arts, and that's just a curriculum I'm very familiar with. Somebody else may do something else, a style that they're familiar with. Um, for me, it was this. So I took this curriculum, that's my base, and I evolved everything. And if by evolve, all that means is adapt to me. It doesn't mean that what I do now is better. And uh, if I really thought that my style is better than, than this, then I wouldn't practice this anymore. And that's not true. I still practice this and teach this to this day. So, and I will continue to do so. So, um, and, and the reason is, I, you can see I put the word academic. So for me, this is academic. And uh, I understand the difference between academic and application and that they're two separate things. If you don't understand that, then when you watch like a, let's say a Kung Fu guy fight an MMA guy and you, you, you're viewing it and you go, that doesn't look like Kung Fu. That's the typical response of someone that doesn't understand the difference between the two. A learning environment and a combat environment is 100% not the same. So therefore, uh, it should not look the same. It's, it's as simple as that. But uh, once again, so me evolving it to my personal taste. So the, the original art that I chose was Filipino martial arts. You might pick something else. And then the way that I evolved it was for self-defense and to be using a knife. And at the time, specifically, it was a tactical folding knife. So I had to add stuff to this curriculum that was lacking in regards to a tactical folding knife. So, uh, and carrying it and deploying it. And so I had to add stuff like that to this because traditionally that's, that's not in there. And uh, so those are some of the things and in uh, each one of these i i evolved e every single one of these things except for the the competition part um i i evolved big time uh and then and once again that is not to say that my evolution is better it's just to say it's different academic and application is different and application for me for my purposes right and the other thing was um one of the other reason uh grounds of evolving that was very important for me maybe not for somebody else was to be able to do filipino martial arts in full contact so that was always extremely important to me i need to be able to do it in full contact and and by full contact what i'm really envisioning here is mma so against the mma fighter in pretty much mma rules i need to be able to do it and if I broke a couple of rules here and there, that was a game. Um, I, I wouldn't if I if I entered a competition, but I'm just saying in my mind in the street, there are no rules. So, so I didn't care about that at all. But I can't use that as an excuse because I hear a lot of people say, well, what I do is street and what they do is sport. I would be attacking the eyes. And unless what you do is 90% attacking the eyes, then I call BS, get out of my face. You know, you're using it as an excuse. So uh, I didn't want to be like one of those guys. Yeah, I'll attack the eyes, no problem. That's part of my, um, um, in my arsenal, without a doubt. That is taught in Filipino martial arts to attack the eyes. So that's in there, but I don't want to rely on it or use that as an excuse. So I sh you should still be able to go up against the MMA fighter. And I'm not saying win. All I'm saying is you better look like you know what you're doing. You better look like you, you give a decent fight. If not, you know, you just all of a sudden your style goes out the window and you get knocked out. You get punched in the face repeatedly. And then it's like, dude, then <laughs> that's a complete no. Okay. Once again, I'm not saying win, defeat the guy at their game. No, no, that's, that's a, that's a fantasy. All right, or unless the guy's like extremely weak and not a worthy opponent. So against someone that is at your level and trains MMA and, and you guys go at it full contact, you should be able to do 
you know, you should be able to at least do something. Uh, so to if you can't, then to me, you you cannot do full contact. So that was very, very important to me that all the stuff that I learned academically, I can use, not, not all of it, but I could use this stuff to a certain extent in full contact and, uh, you know, just not get smashed and creamed and, and look like a chump, <laughs> you know? So uh, if, it, if I wasn't able to, I would not be satisfied with this. So that's why I, I evolved it for me. So that, that's another ground. So once again, real, real quick recap is number one is three-dimensional cross training. That's huge for me. Number two is the tactical folding knife. And then number three was to be able to do it in full contact. So these three grounds is what made me really change the Filipino martial arts curriculum. Like I said, I train it as is and I teach it as is, but I also have my own style, the vampire fighting system, which, you know, those three things changed it to where I go, it's different enough that I could say this is my own style. Now, some people may say that's not different enough. You know, those three things is just not enough. Okay, and that, that's your opinion. Okay, but I'm giving my opinion. Those are the grounds for me to say, you know, why I changed each one of these things, whether it was uh, cornerstone weapons, skill sets, theory, and then training methods. Okay, and uh, so, so please, I, I'm hoping this will help people not just immediately go, yeah, I made my own style. Not so quick to do that and, and to understand that, you know, uh, it takes a lot of work to, to do this if you're going to be thorough about it. So, um, and hopefully this will give you an idea on how to do it and what to tackle and, and whatever, if that's what you want to do. So anyway, that's it for now. Thank you for viewing and take care, folks.